We are set to go, if you'd like, Mr. Chair. Okay, I am ready to rock. Let us begin. Let me know when I can. Yeah, we're streaming Commence. in live. You can start. All right, thank you, Matthew. Good morning, everybody. My name is Councilor Paul Ainsley, and I'm the chair of the General Government Licensing Committee. The clerk has confirmed that we have quorum, and I would now like to call meeting number 29 to order. Welcome everyone to our first meeting of 2022. Today's meeting is being held with members of council and city staff participating by both video conference and in person at City Hall in the council chamber. As of yesterday morning, City Hall is once again open to the public and anyone is welcome to attend the meeting in the council chamber at City Hall today. The public may continue to participate electronically via video conference and this meeting is also live streaming on youtube.com backslash Toronto City Council live. The city, the clerk staff have connected registered speaking speakers to the meeting by audio. The list of speakers can be viewed online by visiting the general government licensing page at toronto.ca slash council and clicking the speakers box for today's meeting. Members, the city clerk has provided all agenda materials on toronto.ca slash council and on the clerk's meeting portal. Clerk's IT staff are also available for members in the chamber and remotely as usual if you need help with your devices. As part of each agenda item, I will ask members to raise their hand or unmute their microphone if they wish to speak question staff or to speak. I will then create a speakers list and we'll call on members when it is their turn to speak. When voting on items for a motion, I ask that members ensure that they keep their video on and to raise their hand to indicate their vote. Members, I wanna remind you that my, you must still submit and approve your motions by email. Staff are available at gglc at toronto.ca to help with any motions. For our land acknowledgement, I would like to acknowledge that we are in different locations of meeting remotely today. The committee would like to acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty Number 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. At this point, I'm going to ask if there's any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. If you do have an interest, if you could please raise your hand and unmute your microphone. Seeing none, we will now proceed. Can I have a motion to confirm the minutes of our meeting of January 14th, 2020? So moved, Stephen Holliday. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Holliday. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? And that motion carries. Um, sorry, members, just before we review the order paper, I would just like to do uh, a bit of promotion and remind all of the members of the General Government Licensing Committee and uh, the general public that the City of Toronto recently launched our new mobile app for 311 Toronto, making it much easier, more convenient for residents, businesses, and visitors to connect with 311 anywhere, anytime, on any smart device. Our new 311 Toronto app offers more benefits to the end user, including GPS capability to allow users to pinpoint and set the exact location of a service request or problem, uh, explore nearby points of interest, such as civic centers, libraries, museums, recreation centers. They can use the camera function to easily upload and attach a photo of the service request for additional contacts for city staff. They can book an appointment for selected services and receive confirmation reminders and notifications on your device through the app. Individual personalization, uh, dark and light mode, store preferences and information are all readily available on the app. The launch of the mobile app is an extension of our enhanced 311 Toronto Services experience introduced last fall 
which includes online self-serve submissions for all of the approximately 600 service requests that 311 offers, start to finish tracking of requests, real-time status updates via text or email notification, live online chat, and an expanded knowledge base, all of which are easier to access on the new mobile app. And I very much want to thank uh, our 311 staff led by Gary York and all of our IT staff led by Lauren Zita, who have all been working tirelessly to make this app work, to bring, uh, as I like to say, the city of Toronto kicking and screaming into the 21st century. I've already been using uh, this app quite a bit. I know Deputy Mayor Holiday has as well, as well as a number of our colleagues. And I encourage all of our colleagues and the public to uh, down this app on your, download this app on your mo phone or tablet or mobile device. And um, you, I think, I know you'll be very happy with it. Thank you very much. And now we will review the items on our agenda, starting with GL 21.9. I also have a new piece of business that I will introduce on behalf of Councillor Wong Tam when we run through, as we run through the agenda. Our first item is GL 21.9. It is apportionment of property taxes as of March 22nd, 2020. It is a hearing scheduled for 945. So I will hold that in my name for now. Number two is a cancellation reduction or refund of property taxes as of March 22nd, 2020. It is also a public hearing scheduled for 945. I will hold that in my name. Uh, number three, GL 29.3 is an amendment to blanket contract number 47021198 with Olympic dust control for walk-off mat rentals at various city locations. Would anybody like to hold this item? Would anybody like to move the recommendations in this item? Councillor Mantis is moving the recommendations. All in favor? And that carries. Uh, doo -doo -doo, sorry. Number four is an amendment to purchase order number 6052656 with Brook Restoration Limited for the exterior rehabilitation of the Canada Malting Company South Silos at 5 Erin Key in Ward 10. Would anybody like to hold this item? Seeing none, would somebody like to move the recommendations? I'll move it, Chair Stephen Holliday. Deputy Mayor Holliday, thank you very much. All in favor? And that carries. Number GL 29.5 is an amendment to purchase order number 6047522 with Perkins and Will Canada Corporation for the Northeast Scarborough Community Recreation Center and Child Care Center in. Uh, ward 25, this is in Councillor McKelvey's ward. Um, and Councillor McKelvey is fully supportive of this. I do need somebody to move the recommendations. I'll move Councillor right. Matlow. I'll, okay. Oh, sorry. Speaker Nunziata is moving the recommendations. All in favor? Carry. GL 29.6, amendment to a non-competitive purchase order number 6030175 for NOR Limited architects and engineers for design construction and warranty support in Ward 10. Somebody like to move the recommendations? Councillor Mansis is moving the recommendations. All in favor? Carried. GL 29.7, amendments to non-competitive procurement with Chubb Edwards Forest City Fire Protection and Graham Alarm, Alarm Monitoring for Fire and Life Safety Devices. Somebody like to move the recommendations in this? Deputy Mayor Holliday? Deputy Mayor Holliday is moving the recommendations. All in favor? I will. Carried. Uh, GL 29.8. Uh, comes with a confidential attachment. It is entitled Service Now Procurement Issue Update. I'll hold that, please, Mr. Chair. Councillor Filion is holding number eight. Mm. 
Number nine, non-competitive agreement with Ford Motor Company of Canada Limited for original equipment, manufacturing parts and services through their authorized dealer network. Would anybody like to hold uh, number nine? I'll move it, Mr. Have Chair. Somebody move. Stephen Sorry, Holliday. was that Stephen Deputy Mayor Holliday? Holliday? Yep, we'll move that. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Holliday. Uh, all in favor of the recommendations in number nine. That carries. Uh, number 10, application for approval to expropriate parts of two and 90 Bloor Street East for the Bloor Young Capacity Improvement Stage Project, Stage 1 in Ward 11. Somebody like to move this? I'll move the recommendation. Thank you, Speaker Nunziata. Speaker Nunziata is moving the recommendations in number 10. All in favor? And that carries. Uh, GL 29.11 is the expropriation of 37 Norton Avenue for the expansion of the John McKenzie Parkette, Stage 2 in Ward 18. I'll move that. Uh, thanks, Councillor Fillion. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. Councillor Fillion is moving the recommendations of number 11. All in favor? That carries. Uh, number GL 29.12 is the expropriation of a portion of 5791 to 5793 Young Street for public street purposes, stage two in Ward 18. Councillor Fillion? I'll, I'll move that one. All right, thank you, Councillor Fillion. Is Councillor Fillion's moving the recommendations of number 12. All in favor? And that carries. Uh, number 13, G is the designation of certain lands with respect to the Toronto Parking Authority operations as municipal parking facilities. Somebody like to move this? I'll move the recommendation. Thank you, Speaker Nunziata. Speaker Nunziata is moving the recommendations. All in favor? That carries. Number 14, nominal lease agreement with It's OK Community Arts at 468 Queen Street in Ward 10. May I move that? Uh, sorry, may I hold that, uh, Mr. Chair? Excuse me. Deputy Mayor Holliday is holding, sorry, number 14. Number 15, the reassignment of the new Etobicoke Civic Center project and contracts for create TO to corporate real estate management in Ward 3. Somebody like to move the recommendations on this item? I can move that, Mr. Chair. Stephen Holliday. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Holliday is moving the recommendations in number 15. That carries. Uh, number 16, status of audit recommendations and key cybersecurity risks. If there is a confidential attachment. I believe, Deputy Mayor Holliday, you had a motion that you wanted to move? Yep, may I hold that? And I'll take a moment to advise you that we may need to go into camera and we'll sort that out. Okay. All right. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Holliday. Number 16 is held in your name. Number 17, amendments to Municipal Code Chapter 217, Record City Corporate. Somebody like to move the recommendations in number 17? Councillor Mansis is moving the recommendations in number 17. All in favor? That carries. Uh, number 18 is our fair wage office annual report. This is an annual report, uh, as I just said, but it's for this one is for 2020 and 2021. Anybody like to hold this or move the recommendations? Councillor Fillion is moving the recommendations in number 18. And I would just like to take a moment to thank the staff in the Fair Wage Office for all of their ongoing diligence and work in making sure that uh, all of our uh, people that work in the City of Toronto and uh, those that work as contractors um, receive the wages and benefits that they deserve and that they need. And I'd like to thank you and acknowledge for all the hard work in the Fair Wage Office. Uh, Councillor Fillion is moving the recommendations. All in favour? And that carries. Uh, number 19 is vehicle damages caused from operating error. Somebody like to hold this or move the recommendations? Councillor Mantis is moving the recommendations. Number 19, all in favour? That carries. Uh, number 20 is an emergency non-competitive contract with a a Acom Canada Limited and amendment to purchase order 604-5596 
for repairs to the East Dawn Sanitary Trunk and the Highland Creek Sanitary Trunk sewers in Ward 17 and Ward 21. I have somebody, if they don't wish to hold it, move the recommendations in this I'll, report. I'll move it, Mr. Chair, Stephen Holliday. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Holliday. Deputy Mayor Holliday is moving the recommendations in number 20. All in favor, that carries. Uh, I would like to introduce a letter from our colleague, Councillor Kristen Wong Tam. It is on the screen. It uh, has a number of recommendations or requests of uh, municipal licensing and standards. Um, this is regards to accessibility and equity for Toronto taxi drivers. Um, I will uh, take a motion to introduce on this agenda and then I will let the member, we can come back to this when members have had a chance to read it. I have a motion to introduce it. Chair Ainsley. I have to declare a conflict for this item. Oh, okay. All right. Councillor Mansis to declaring a conflict of interest on this item. Sorry, Councillor, if you shortly. Thank you. If you just turn off your video while we vote to introduce this item. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, we just need to understand um, Councillor Mantis's the nature of Councillor Mantis's conflict or uh, interest on the item. If, could he just state that into the mic? Okay. Sorry, Councillor Mantis. Councillor Mantis. Yes, Chair. Sorry, I would. We just need you to verbally state your conflict of interest for the uh, committee clerk. Sorry, a family member um, is an operator of a taxi license. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Mantis. Is it the will of the committee? Will hold this down until everybody's had a chance to look at it. Uh, absolutely. We have questions to staff, so we can bring staff. Okay, perfect. All right, we will hold this item down. Thank you. Sorry, Matthew, do I need to vote to introduce it? Yes, Mr. Chair. Could we Add it to the agenda? The item, please? Yeah. All right, I will move a uh, motion to introduce this item to the agenda. All in favor? And that carries. Okay, so we have uh two items held that have confidential files um councillor fillion do you need to go on camera for your item i don't think so um no i don't believe so okay and deputy mayor holiday you think you will need to go on camera for number 13, 16 status of audit recommendations and key cyber security risks Mr. Chair, I'd advise that we prepare the motion for that and uh, I'll sort it out if uh, I'll, I'll get that sorted out with staff as to whether or not the con. Why don't we uh, start, we'll work our way through the agenda and then um, if we have to go in camera for number 16, we can do that at the uh, as the last item of the meeting. So our first item will be GL 29.1. It's apportionment of property taxes as of March 22nd, 2020. It's a 9.45 a.m. Um, public hearing. Um, I don't know, sorry, Matthew, we don't have any deputations on this item. Uh, we are on GL 29.1. Um, I see that yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Brendan is online as well. Uh, my understanding is that there is a potential deputation on GL 29.2. Yep. Yep. So that's correct. Uh, so number 21, we can we can dispense with. Okay. So I do have a motion that I will be moving that the General Government Licensing Committee approve the apportionment of property taxes in the amounts identified in appendices A and B to the report February 11th, 2020 from the controller under the columns entitled apportion tax and apportion, apportion phase in slash capping. All in favor of the motion? That carries, item is amended, all in favor, and that carries. And then we have our next public hearing is GL 29.2 cancellation, reduction, or refund of property taxes as of March 22nd, 2022. This is also a public hearing. And sorry, Matthew, you have a, a speaker 
I don't have any speakers listed at my end. You've got a speaker listed? Uh, my apologies, Mr. Chair. I understand that we have a, an adjournment. I think uh, Mr. Brendan, Casey Brendan, would like to speak. Maybe you can clarify. Okay. Sure. Mr. Brendan. Thank you, and good morning, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? I can, loud and clear. Wonderful. Um, we were advised that a deputant had requested to speak to this item. The deputant has chosen to uh, adjourn um, his appeal until the next meeting. So there is an adjournment motion in front of you to adjourn this one item, and it will uh, be considered at a future committee meeting. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brendan. So, Matthew, do I need to adjourn this whole item or uh, we just will, for that one? Yeah, we will display the uh, the adjournment motion here. I believe this okay. is what the committee should um, should vote on here. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. So we do have a motion on the screen, which I will be moving. All in favor? Sorry, item is item is amended. All in favor? Carry. Our next item is number eight. Uh, sorry, let me just get my screen. Number eight, uh, GL 29.8, ServiceNow Procurement Issue Update, uh, held by Councillor Fillion. Councillor Fillion, do you have questions of staff? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. So how, um, you, for whoever wants to answer, I guess, um, Mr. Patchelak, um, how unusual is it for um, a large vendor to default on an agreement? Uh, through, through the chair, I would say it, it's quite unusual for a large vendor to um, refuse to enter into the agreement after the procurement process has been completed. I think I have, I have not seen this um, during my time here uh, in the last 10 years. So this is an unusual uh, situation. And um, was a reason provided that you can discuss um, in public? Uh, well, as, as we indicated in the first report, um, uh, to, we, we went and awarded the, uh, the RFQ for the ServiceNow subscriptions to Deloitte. Um, and then after that was done, they they refused to enter in the contract. I don't. I really can't speak to the reasons why they chose not to uh, do it in the end. Um, but they they found that they couldn't agree with the terms and conditions after after the procurement was done. And they would have had um, lots of opportunity to familiarize themselves with all of those conditions prior to uh, bidding. Would that be right? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, the the call was in the street for you know, at least fifteen days. Um, there were no questions during that time period, uh, and there they Deloitte has uh, has bid on many uh, other items. Normally, though, they would bid on RFPs, which um, and negotiable RFPs, which have a little bit more leeway for negotiations. An RFP is does not have negotiation in it. Is it is the terms and conditions that's set out in the document. And um, uh, if you don't have this answer, that's fine, because I'm sort of surprising you with the question, but do you know approximately how much in business um, Deloitte has had from the city over the last whatever period, five years, 10 years, two years? Uh, my, thanks to my staff who just magically gave me, gave me the number. Um, over the last five years, it's approximately $94 million worth of contracts. Um, and so it says in the, in the report that they've learned, they said they'd learned something from this. What did they say they'd learned? Uh, I think they really learned the appreciation of the di difference between an RFQ and an RFP and making sure that that information is known across the organization because uh, different different parts of the Deloitte will will be submitting uh, responses. So I think it's been a good education with respect to the 
the rules of government procurement, especially when it comes to requests for quotations. And the when you were trying to resolve this matter, you um, would I be correct that you weren't just dealing with um, you know lower management? Were you trying to resolve it through higher management? Uh, through through the chair, I, I was working with with higher management um, in in discussing the, this matter. Yes, and surely those people knew the difference, right? Uh, well, I, I I'm not I can't really speak to what they may have known at the time, but but they are certainly now aware that uh, there is clearly a distinction between an RFQ and an RFP. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. Other questions of committee members on this item? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Fillion, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, and I have a motion, if the clerks can put it up, um, which I'll start talking while they're looking for it, I guess, which pertains to the um, uh, the confidential attachment. So um, what I'm hoping is that we can make uh, as much of this uh, public as possible. Of course, the solicitor will still uh, keep private anything that, um, that uh, we are required to. Uh, but, you know, this is just so unusual that, um, um, you know, I, I don't think it can, I think we need to make it clear that uh, like a large company that gets tens of millions of dollars in business from the city for them to renege on something, even if they did misunderstand the terms, which is kind of a remarkable level of um, lack of competence for somebody who were hiring for their competence, you know, it, it's kind of uh, surprising and remarkable. But even if that was the case, it, even if they made the mistake, you would think that a company that is this large, that deals with the city on such a large scale, would honor their agreement. You know, it's just kind of surprising. Um, and I think we very clearly need to let both this, um, company and others that do business with the city know that this is not acceptable behavior by any means um, and not what we expect from companies that want to continue to do business with the city. So I thank the staff for the report. I think it's a, it's a good report, um, um, but I'm hoping that we can make a little bit more of it or perhaps all of it um, uh, public. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fillion. Uh, are there any questions of the mover? Seeing none, uh, are there speakers on this item? Uh, seeing none, um, I, as the last speaker, I just wanna say that I'll be supporting Councillor Fillion's motion that uh, I think, you know, one of the, the key roles that this uh, committee fulfills is the due diligence on the uh, contracts that we oversee um, across a wide range of areas in the city of Toronto. They're not always uh, noticed by the general public, but I think um, in this past term, the, ex the members of this committee have done an excellent job ensuring open and transparent government for the city of Toronto. And I think that con companies that do uh, bid on contracts successfully win them should be held to uh, a level of accountability that um, needs to be and show, shown and expected of them. And uh, I hope that moving forward that Deloitte's learned its lesson. And this is also an example to other companies uh, that they need to fulfill the terms of their agreements. So we do have a, a motion before us by Councillor Fillion. Uh, all in favor of the motion. Uh, carries all, um, sorry. And now uh, we have the motion before us as amended, all in favor, and that carries. Thank you very much. 
Our next item is, sorry, I'm losing my mouse here. Our next item is number uh, 14, GL 2914, nominal lease agreement with It's Okay Community Arts at 468 Queen Street West in Ward 10. Deputy Mayor Holiday, you held this item. Do you have questions of staff? Uh, thank you, Chair. I think we can dispense with the questions. I'll offer a very brief explanation to my motion to uh, my colleagues on the committee. Okay. Um, are there any other members of the committee that have uh, questions of staff on this item? Uh, seeing none, we will go to speakers. Councillor Hall, Deputy Mayor Holiday, you held this item. Uh, would you like to speak? Thanks, Chair. Uh, I. we are going to uh, try to adhere as much as possible to the community space tenancy policy. And the second motion asks uh, economic development and culture uh, to really get to work on looking for a more permanent location for the tenant, uh, provided that they remain in good standing. And so my, my thoughts on this are twofold. Uh, as the report tells us, um, because of the, the, the arrangements in this circumstance, uh, they can't, the staff cannot follow the community space tenancy policy um, uh, to the letter. Um, and so what this says is, uh, please follow as much of it as you can, uh, given the exact circumstances. And very specifically, it's a very short term lease because it's a, a temporary arrangement. Uh, but I, you know, as a city, I think we should do our best to follow our policies because of the transparency and the integrity to the process that it offers. And so that's what the first part is. And the second part is, you know, I, I hope things work out very well for the tenant and, uh, I also hope that the park gets redeveloped, but those two things will collide in, in a couple of years. And uh, this suggests that uh, the people get to work right away on trying to figure out what a permanent solution is. Um, so that's the, the motion before. Uh, I don't think it's controversial and I, was, uh, I will say thank you to staff for their support in helping develop these words. Okay. Thank just you, a uh, question of the mover. Yep, I was just going to ask about questions of the mover. Councillor Fillion. Um, yes, just uh, Councillor Holliday, I don't fully understand the the first part. And um, was there a specific uh, provision that you were concerned about? Uh, yeah. And when you say all the parties involved, was the councillor for the area um, consulted or, or the, um, the organization which would be coming in? I'm just not clear on the implications of this, that's all. Uh, the the councillor for the area has been... Okay, thank you. Uh, other questions of the mover? Sorry, De uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday, I just wanted to get some clarification. Um, you, you said, I guess that Councillor Cressy was notified 
that you were moving this motion this morning. Did you did you actually talk with him, or was there a response back from his office that uh, they were okay with this motion? It, it was done in written format, just because of the. Okay. Okay. All right. Those are my questions. Uh, seeing no other questions, uh, other speakers on this item. Uh, seeing no other speakers, uh, we have a, an amendment on the floor before us from Deputy Mayor Holliday. All in favor? That carries. Uh, item is amended. All in favor? And that carries. Our next item is number 16, status of audit recommendations and key cybersecurity risks. There is a confidential attachment, uh, actually three confidential attachments. This item is held by Deputy Mayor Holliday. Deputy Mayor Holliday, do you need to go on camera? Uh, Mr. Chair, I've uh, sought. First, I'm going to ask uh, if any other members uh, have quest public questions on this item. Does any other member of the committee need to go in camera? Seeing none, um, speakers in public on this item. Deputy Mayor Holliday, you held the item uh, to speak. Thank yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. If I may ask the clerk. Uh, with the same uh, request, but I'll paraphrase quickly. Uh, it, it asks uh, uh, anyone that has an outstanding component um, to uh, submit that immediately. And if they haven't submitted, uh, uh, please be available for questions at the uh, upcoming council meeting. Uh, and then uh, another component would be a remediation plan and it asks anyone that, uh, that has not submitted a remediation plan to do that immediately. And if uh, they have not, uh, they should be ready for questions at the next GGLC, uh, which is uh, April 29th, and that there would be a report. And finally, it asks that the CISO uh, report to the next three meetings of GGLC on an exception basis for anything uh, that is outstanding with respect to the 30, 60, 90 day remediation plans so that the committee has line of sight uh, and can deal with that. Okay, all right. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Holliday. Are there any questions of the mover? Seeing none, other speakers uh, on this Chair, item? I'm sorry, if I can just con converse with the clerk, something has, uh, I just wanted to point out. Sure. Uh, we're just getting a, a word corrected, Mr. Chair.
Sure, Mr. Chair, I just uh, just to advise on the, the, the correction of the wording, um, items one and two should, should uh, not say All right, I think those changes have been made. Uh, at this point, does anybody have any questions of the mover? Seeing none, are there any other speakers on this item? Seeing none, uh, I would just like to say to the chair of the committee, I will be supporting the amendments by uh, Deputy Mayor Holliday, who is also the uh, chair of the audit committee. Uh, I know there's been quite a wholesome discussion around cybersecurity risk at the audit committee. I know that our IT staff under Lawrence Eda's direction are working very diligently on all matters dealing with cybersecurity. Uh, you know, this is of paramount importance. Uh, you see, um, you know, almost every sector of society, whether it's municipal government, uh, hospitals, um, you know, are regularly receiving cyber security attacks. So I think it's very important and, um, as I said, paramount importance that every agency board and commission understands the cyber security risks that they can encounter or are encountering and how to make sure that the data that's under the Uh, item as amended, all in favor, and that passes. Thank you. Our next item is. of staff, but I'm here to uh, provide any clarification if needed for the motion. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I will bring this back into committee. Does anybody have questions of staff on this item or questions of Wong Tam? No. Councillor Wong Tam, who can provide some clarity. No, I have questions of staff. I believe Speaker staff Nunziata. Are here. Okay. So um, we have staff here. So you, you've uh, seen the Thank you, um, Mr. Chair and uh, Councillor Nunziata. It's Fiona Chapman. I'm representing Carlton, uh, who's in arbitration today. Um, so, um, as you note, this is the, the first that we've seen of these particular recommendations. Um, can certainly uh, support recommendations number two and three. With regards to recommendation number one, um, uh, one of the things that we're currently doing is confirming with the Ombudsman's Office uh, whether this might be something that's in scope. But I might um, address myself uh, to the city's modernization efforts. We created an online portal for all licensees, both new and those renewing, uh, in 2020 uh, in response to the pandemic. And this allowed people to continue to get their licenses. Um, and also for everybody to be safe um, in doing so and not have to attend in person. We have since uh, September to December of 2021, and then again, um, as of February, reopened some limited in-person services. And um, what I want to um, it, tell people is that uh, everybody has, um, all of our licensees have a variety of modes 
of accessing the city's licensing and permit services. For those who are challenged with technology, uh, there are actual screenshots and uh, a guide that is there. It's fairly straightforward. We also have a call centre that operates in support of this and email channels if anybody has any questions. Lastly, if people are having any issues with the portal, especially around renewals or dropping off materials, we have a drop box at 850 Coxwell if they actually want to drop something off or they can also use um, Canada Post and uh, will respond back. Um, I, and I just want to say that um, while I appreciate this particular motion is focused on the taxi industry, we license 99 different categories um, of uh, business licenses and so it, it, there's a quite wide range of um, citizens and, uh, and business people across the city who use these services and uh, and largely it's been I think uh, a success. We, we're constantly working with our partners in technical services to further enhance the portal. Uh, they are busy people and uh, um, you know, we appreciate that uh, uh, we are not always able to to do everything as quickly as possible, and and we're also dealing with uh, shortages as is everybody um, uh, through this uh, pandemic, and uh, and we're in the midst of staffing up. So we're actually very positive about having this uh, channel available to the community. Uh, we're very happy to work with people about further improvements. It is not, and I, I would never uh, tell anybody otherwise, uh, what I would describe as a digital end-to-end -end solution. That's um, obviously a much bigger investment on the part of the city. Um, but we, you know, we are working uh, very closely with uh, the city's modernization efforts and, uh, and our technical services to look at those uh, over time. So um, I'm very happy to uh, answer any other questions, um, and I trust that helps. Okay, so just um, just on that point, so you're. Stand by our portal and, um, and we think it would certainly bear any scrutiny of um, any party, including the Ombudsman. I just wanted to take the opportunity to to talk a little bit about what we've done and the ways in which we've tried to ensure that everybody can access city services equitably. Um, and and I also want to say, of course, that whenever we put up our forms, they must be fully accessible. And uh, as far. Currently, um, through the pandemic, we've only had the drop box at uh, Coxwell, just because um, all of our staff had been pulled off to uh, to COVID uh, enforcement uh, activities. Um, we're also concerned about the timeliness if somebody drops something in, so we can get at it the next day. Um, but uh, I can take that back as an undertaking, Councillor. Thank you. Questions. Thank you, Speaker Speaker Nunziata, uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday. Uh, thank you. May I ask, is the ombudsman available for questions? If not, I will go to MLS staff at this juncture. Um, so through you, um, may I ask on what the process is to assess the, is it the Thank you, um, Councillor Holliday, and through the, the chair. Uh, the drop fee is essentially the, um, the rate when you enter the cab and the flag goes up, and it's currently 325. Um, and this has not been revisited as a base rate since 2015. 
Um, so we're certainly very supportive of that being increased in response to the, um, you know, quite prohibitive uh, rate uh, of gas per um, per liter right now. There are mechanisms, however, uh, um, with regards to any fee increase. Uh, there would need to. These are attached to the bylaws, Appendix A. So uh, we can, um, as an undertaking. Um, with this motion, report through to the next council with the actual um, directives, and we would also need to investigate with clerks whether we would require an actual fee increase notice. So the first. defer to legal and also consult with clerks. Could you bring a report back to this committee? Uh, we could certainly do so um, as requested. And how would you, would you, would you do some analysis or does like, is a buck? One of the things that we had been discussing as a staff team is we have been directed to report back in later in 2023. This is as a result of the uh, the last discussions around vehicle for hire in uh, November and December. And we had been discussing revisiting. We've been directed to revisit fees, but also re uh, revisiting fares and um, and, a, and a conversation that might um, be informed uh, about how those rates are set in a way that is not uh, staff led necessarily or even politically led, but you know, very focused on specific indicators. I'll use the very simple example of uh, applying the COLA on fees on an annual basis. Um, you know, people know what it is and uh, it's uh, understood by everybody and it happens automatically. So we, we talked about um, trying to have that kind of an exercise um, on a go forward basis and then posting rates so that the, uh, the meters could be adjusted uh, accordingly and certainly consumers would be aware. This particular value, um, I can't speak to uh, its um, uh, whether it in fact uh, relates to exactly how much uh, the trips are. Um, we are aware that the rideshare companies have induced a, um, a kind of a premium, if you like. I'm, I'm not quite sure if I'm using the, uh, the exact terminology, okay. um, but also jurisdictions like, um, and I could be wrong here, but I believe both Mississauga and Brampton have a base rate of $4.25 as well. Okay, so, so I'm not sure if last I question on this. Um, it, it's a quite reasonable question to ask. In all honesty, I'm not sure if I could give you um, an answer uh, in fairness. I'm, I'm, we have obviously not had a chance to speak to the Ombudsman. Our partners in technical services would have to be heavily involved. We do have a, a quite uh, 
large work program around vehicle for hire, um, regardless. Um, so, uh, Councillor, it's a good question, and I, I'm not sure I could uh, provide you with an answer that uh, that was fair to both the staff and the community and the stakeholder community. Thank you. Thank and, you, Chairman. And if I could just have, uh, with the chair's permission, uh, uh, just a moment on the question of public notice. If uh, that recommendation three is intended to bring in force a change uh, at the next council meeting, that would be an amendment to the bylaw that requires public notice. Public notice has not been given uh, for this item, so it will have to go back either through a reporting uh, to the next committee meeting so public notice can be given, or uh, this item should be deferred so that it can be given. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lynch. Uh, are there questions of staff on this item? Uh, so I I just wanted to ask um, Ms. Chapman on the, or maybe it's Mr. Lynch, the the drop fare taxi meter rate, it was lowered in 2015. And is it not reviewed annually in terms of cost of inflation or, you know, uh, I've had taxi cab drivers reach out to me and say they'd like it raised just to help them with the recent cost of gas. Um, and you did say there's, you know, a bylaw that it has to be amended. So, you know, it can't be, you know, as gas goes up and down and we all know it goes up and down a lot in Toronto. So it's not something that, you know, can be changed with the fluctuation of gas, but with the cost of inflation, you know, does this not get reviewed annually? Um, it hasn't moved since 2015 when council dropped it. I don't, I'm not sure who can answer that. Is that Ms. Chapman? I see you I'll, waving. I'll start and certainly defer to Corey as needed. Um, it has not actually been reviewed. It is under Chapter 546, it's Appendix A, the taxi cab tariff and charges. Um, and so, no, there is not a built in annual or otherwise or review otherwise. And um, to my knowledge, it has not been reviewed since uh, its introduction and affirmation by council in 2016. Right. Is there a reason for that or is that just something that just never got looked at or? Uh, Councillor, I'm actually, uh, unfortunately, I was not um, uh, working with MLS at that time, so I'm not sure I understood the thinking at that, but there is no mechanism within the bylaw um, that suggests an annual review. Okay, so that's something that we would have to do. If I wanted to move that, that's something I would have to do apart from this. Well, I think what we heard from Corey was first and foremost, it'd have to be notice. Yeah. And then okay. would be um, the amendment to the bylaw. All right. And then my next question, uh, I think it's for you, Ms. Chapman, again, um, the portal, the digital porter, portal that the taxi cab drivers are using to submit their forms and data. Um, how do you test that? Like, I know that you said it's it's available um, in multi-language format that is very easy to use, but I'm, I get complaints periodically from drivers or, you know, the children of drivers um, that it's not that easy to use. And, you know, their parent, English isn't their first language, um, so they're asking their children to submit the forms and the data that's required, and the children have reached out to me and said, you know, they have trouble with it. And, and you know, the one child in particular, he has a university education. So do you have, do you have somebody that tests the system that you can, you know, that language, English isn't their first language that they can, you can watch them try and use the system or, you know, how do you test it for compatibility for lack of a better word? Um, thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, first, if I might um, distinguish between uh, an individual owner or driver accessing a business license and the data, which is the requirement that the brokerages um, as well as the rideshare companies must provide. They are uh, quite separate and uh, have uh, quite different channels. For the purposes of licenses, your question is around how do we test 
um, they uh, and uh, please understand me that the um, materials are not available online in all languages. Um, I'm, I'm sorry if I perhaps had given you that impression. Um, they are fairly straightforward. We do uh, work around plain language. Um, the, all of the forms are accessible and AODA compliant. They are all attached to each license group through our website. People can also, for new licenses, make an appointment if they wish to actually attend in person. The specific question you ask is how do you test? We work very closely with technical services on user testing. So we are um, as often as not working through with our staff to test, um, you know, soft launch. Um, and then when we, um, as we go forward, uh, inevitably you get feedback from clients or um, on our on the back end, we notice issues that clients are having, or we hear some comments through the call center or our email channels, and then we'll work with technical services to make those fixes. I mean, it's very iterative, and um, and I'm always mindful uh, that I um, that the resources that technical services have for sustainment are also limited. Okay, all right. I think I'm at the end of my time. Thank you very much. Um, other questions of the committee on this item? Seeing none, um, outside members to speak. Councillor Wong Tam? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you, committee. I, I apologize that I wasn't able to sort of get the, uh, the, the letter out sooner. The issue came to my attention only uh, as of recent, um, and we worked as quickly as we could just to place the item onto the agenda. Uh, so I'm very pleased that it's here, and uh, thank you very much for your series of questions. Um, and I think that, uh, Mr. Chair, you know, given what the committee members have asked and given the answers from City Legal as well as uh, Ms. Chapman, I think that if there, if the recommendations could, or if the committee could adopt the, the item and move it without recommendations to City Council and perhaps provide instructions to the staff to provide further comment on how to uh, achieve those recommendations, that would be appreciated. I apologize, I didn't have a chance to type that up either. Um, but uh, but essentially, that would be perhaps a, a elegant way for us to move this matter forward is just to move it to council without recommendations and give a chance uh, to staff to to help us. Um, and and I just want to just recognize that you know during the pandemic we saw a lot of significant changes for the city, especially as we became more digitized. We started to move our entire business environment online, and uh, and of course you know I know that there are many. Uh, residents who are also struggling on how to gain access to something as simple as what we take for granted today, virtual meetings. I have residents today who cannot log into virtual meetings. Um, so it works for some, it doesn't work for others. But I think one thing that I can offer you is that given my experience and conversations with those who are in the taxi uh, industry, uh, they're university educated uh, children, uh, masters and PhD level children, was struggling to understand what the the, uh, the portal uh, wanted of uh, of, uh, of the drivers, and uh, and so when instructed to then go to the drop box at uh, 850 Coxwell, uh, city staff at the drop box then told them that the forms were not completed uh, properly and that they needed to go back to the portal. So I guess the the challenge here is that there seems to be a a number one a gap on how people are accessing. Uh, the portal and whether or not the portal interface is as friendly as we would like it to be and you want it to be dynamic and as user friendly as possible. Not to mention the fact that there is an obligation at the City of Toronto to ensure that you know all our services are available to those members of the public who need it in regardless uh, uh, with regardless uh, to their level of you know quote unquote literacy as cited in the uh, Occupational Health and Safety Act, the Workplace um, uh, act as well as um, areas around service and facilities access. So it's not just about English proficiency, it's not even just about computer literacy because you've got users who are English proficient, who are computer pro proficient, but somehow it's just not connecting. So having a, a sort of a, a, a third party review, perhaps it's not a full on review, perhaps it's a series of comments or, or instigating uh, questions that, could, that the Ombudsman could provide to just help us understand and synthesize what the concerns are so that the IT staff can go about 
trying to support MLS in fixing it. I'm very aware that everyone is busy. I am very busy. This committee is very busy and we want to be able to do this as, as succinctly as possible and as quickly as possible. Uh, it's good to hear that there's no qualms with uh, or no objections to uh, recommendations number two and three. It's just a matter of process. So let me speak to the process regarding the drop fare of 325 versus 425. Back in 2015, some of us around this sort of virtual meeting would have been on the floor of council and we would have seen that city council decided to drop the fare from 425 to 325 in response to competition coming online, uh, literally online from Uber and Lyft. We did that as a response to what was in the marketplace. What we're now seeing is that we left the taxi industry somewhat exposed to inflation, to rising costs of vehicle maintenance, to rising vehicle costs, uh, to, um, uh, to obviously the most expensive insurance of any, of any vehicle operation out there in the marketplace, sometimes eight to $12,000 to license that commercial vehicle. Uber, Lyft do not have to pay that. We also have now seen that um, the cost of gas, which everyone is probably feeling at the top pocketbook, has impacted the entire world citizenship, and yet taxi drivers are stuck with their pricing. Interestingly, back in 2015, we gave Uber and Lyft the, the, the I guess, the, uh, the possibility, and in this case, the, the flexibility of, 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 of premium pricing, surge pricing. They can raise and drop their fares whenever they feel like. They don't need to notify the public. They don't need to have conversations or consultations with city council or city staff. They just do it. And the only notification you get is on the app. So here we are finding the taxi industry in such a way that it doesn't allow them to not even just compete, but barely stay alive. So whatever we need to do to ensure that the general public is given their accurate uh, and adequate notice, we should do. But I think what we need to do is probably try to increase that fare from 325 to 425, bringing us back to 2015 rates. 2015 rates. That's seven, eight years ago. And that doesn't save them, but it shows them a sign of good faith. But then also build in a proper annual review, as uh, as the chair has probably uh, very rightly noted. We need to do. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Wongkamp. Uh, we will now bring this back into committee. Uh, committee members to speak on this item. Chair to speak, Stephen Holliday. Deputy Mayor Holliday, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, may I ask the clerk to display my motion? It's quite brief and I can paraphrase. Uh, I'm asking this to be uh, referred to staff and for them to report back uh, to the GGLC uh, on the recommendations uh, from Councillor Wong Tam in the letter. And it's very simple. Uh, this appeared before us uh, without even a notice for the committee. Uh, I have concerns about simply arbitrarily raising uh, the, the, what amounts to the, the cab fares, um, the drop fee, um, without any notice or explanation or staff analysis. Uh, and in addition, um, some of the other components about involving the ombudsman in a process I have questions about and would like to examine that further and get some input from the various uh, people involved in that process. Um, and, and perhaps none of these are controversial, but I would be more comfortable with a staff report before me that uh, gives me all the advice that I need to make a decision on it. Uh, maybe it needs to be more than a dollar. Maybe it needs to be less. Um, let us know. And so this is simply a referral back to staff that says to them to come back and report on these items. Um, and in, in view of uh, fuel prices, if they need to come back to the next committee meeting, so be it. Um, and as pointed out by the solicitor, uh, in changing the bylaw, uh, there's a notice period required. And ultimately, this will have to come back twice to the committee anyways. So let's get it uh, with a nice clean run. Uh, with the appropriate notice and uh, I think that this motion would be helpful to the process uh, and inst instill some confidence in all of this process. Thank you. Question of the mover. Yeah, Councillor Filion. Councillor Holliday, given that the staff, if I understood them, said that they don't have a problem with the recommendation, would, would you be agreeable to changing your motion that they 
report directly to council? Well, if they report directly to council, we'll debate these items and then they will have to come back to the committee and we'll debate them again and then they'll go to council again. So I would still feel more comfortable with a staff report to GGLC on the three items so that I can determine uh, whether any of them are appropriate or are the details of them are appropriate. Um, you know, I approach this with optimism uh, based on the, the background work by the councillor, but I would like to have heard from staff and had a chance to do the full analysis on this. And I think the smoothest way to do that is to come back to the committee uh, with the appropriate notice period. You know, I wish the councillor's letter just simply said, you know, committee asked for this report, uh, but it didn't. It went straight to changing the dollar value and it went straight to council directives. And uh, I think this committee uh, needs the analysis, the full analysis, not just a couple of minutes of questions of staff on this. Uh, so I take that as you, you don't wish to change it. I do not wish to change it to go to directly to council. I, I, as I said, I, I'd like it to come to the committee with a committee report. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. Other questions of the mover? Um, sorry, Deputy Mayor Holiday, I just wanted to ask, could we put a, uh, a date on your motion? Can we make it the April 29th? I, I would be meeting, satisfied for that. Or the June 7th? I, yeah, I didn't get a chance to ask staff uh, how much time they would need to pull it together uh, or if they wanted to bring pieces. That's why I left it open. And I would only say that, you know, bring it with appropriate urgency back to the committee, especially if gas prices are creating a problem then I'm, you know, I'm satisfied at, at maximum speed. So, uh, Mr. Chair, if you want to propose dates, um, you know, the risk being that staff needs to deliver on them, but uh, I, I would be satisfied with that. Okay. If, uh, as a friendly amendment, we'll put report back to the April 29th, 2022 GLC, GGLC meeting. I think that would be friendly. All right. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Holiday. Other questions of the mover? Seeing none, other speakers on this item? Yes, I'll, I'll speak briefly. Speaker Nunziata? Yeah, thank you. And I will be supporting Councillor Holliday's motion. Um, as you heard from our legal uh, department that, um, that if um, recommendation three, in fact, changes the bylaw, um, and you know, I, I, I'm not saying I have a problem with the recommendations, but it really frustrates me when uh, reports are uh, added on to the agenda um, without uh, staff commenting on the report. As you heard from staff, this is the first they've heard of it. I mean, out of courtesy, we should at least inform staff that you're bringing forward this motion rather than have a debate and, and to send it to council and have a huge debate on it. I agree with Councillor Holliday. I, if we refer uh, uh, back to the next uh, committee meeting, and this way will give an opportunity for staff to report back um, and uh, give their comments as well. And as I said, I, I don't have a problem with the recommendations, but I don't think we should be at the 11th hour, be presenting a report and supporting these recommendations without staff comment. Um, that uh, concerns me. Okay, thank you, Speaker Nunziata. Other speakers on this item? Seeing none, so we have a uh, motion before us, moved by Councillor Holliday, sorry, Deputy Mayor Holliday, my apologies, and uh, I will, uh, all in favour? That amendment passes, item is amended, all in favour, and that passes. And I believe uh, Matthew... The only thing that we have left are the bills, and I need Councillor Mantis back or Councillor Matlow. Um, I see not. I know Councillor Mant Mantis declared a conflict. There's Councillor Mantis. Yeah. Thank you, um, Councillor Mantis. So, Mr. Chair, uh, we sh yeah, we should do a recorded vote. Yeah. On the bills? On the bills, please. Yeah. Yes. All right. No, don't worry about it. All right, we are going to do a recorded vote on the bills. All in favor of, sorry, I need a bill on the screen. 
Sorry, Mr. Chair, we're just getting the motion up on the screen. That's okay, Matthew. That the General Government Licensing Committee pass and declares a bylaw, a confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings of the General Government Licensing Committee acting under delegated authority at meeting number 29, held on March 2nd, 2022. All in favor? In favor, uh, Councillor Ainsley. Sorry, my screen's coming back. Councillor Filion, Councillor Mantis, Councillor Holiday, Count, sorry, Deputy Mayor Holiday, Speaker Nunziata, and I do not see Councillor Matlow. And that passes unanimously of all members present at the meeting. And I want to thank everybody for their participation today. Uh, the staff for all of their hard work and dedication across the, all of the areas responsible to the general government licensing committee and to Matthew and the clerk's office for running our first hybrid uh, meeting during COVID for the city of Toronto in 2022. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, motion to adjourn the meeting all in favor that carries. Thank you very much, everybody and hope everybody in your families remain safe and well. Thank you.